Well, good morning. Since you're all seated, I thought we could get started. I'm Colonel Richard Goldenberg from the New York National Guard's Joint Forces Headquarters. Welcome to the unveiling ceremony of our nation's Medal of Honor, awarded to Albany's own Henry Johnson for his actions while serving with the New York Army National Guard's 369th Infantry Regiment on the Western Front of World War I. New York State will also recognize Johnson's service with the award of the New York State Medal for Valor. Please rise for the posting of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and our invocation by Reverend Leonard Cometheer from Macedonia Baptist Church here in Albany. Post the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please remain standing as we welcome Macedonia Baptist Church Reverend Leonard Cometh here. May we center the moment. Eternal God, we are here this morning in the presence of good and goodness to celebrate and commemorate the courage and the heroism of Sergeant Henry Johnson, on the night of May 15th, 1918, history records many acts of bravery and valor from individuals who seek room for peace and who pray for a friendly world. And so we gather this morning fresh from the world with the smell of life upon us to make prayer in the silence of this place. We're stifled by the odor of death which envelops the earth, but while we wait in thy presence, we pray that you would search our spirits and grant to our minds the guidance and the wisdom that will teach us the way to take, teach us how to put at the disposal of thy purpose of peace, the fruits of our industry and the products of our minds, the vast wealth of our land and the resources of our spirit. Grant unto us the courage to follow the illumination of this hour. And may our coming together strengthen the hands of all who govern and seek to build a friendly world. This is the simple desire of our hearts, which we share with thee in gratitude and confidence. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Reverend. We have so many distinguished guests with us here today. Please allow me to uh, welcome Congressman Paul Tonko, who is expected to join us shortly, Senator Neil Breslin, Assemblywoman Patricia Fahey, Assemblyman John McDonald, Mayor Kathy Sheehan, Common Council President Carolyn McLaughlin, and her colleagues from the Albany Common Council, Albany County Comptroller Mike Connors, Democratic Majority Leader Frank Camisso Sr. and his colleagues from the County Legislature, Judge Helena Heath Rowland, our Director of New York State Division of Veterans Affairs, retired Colonel Eric Hesse, Steve Mann from Senator Schumer's office, and former elected officials, former Congressman Michael McNulty, former Assemblyman Jack McEnany, and former Mayor Jerry Jennings. You are joined by a distinguished group that we'd also welcome, Major General Patrick Murphy, the Adjutant General for the State of New York, our fellow veterans and friends of Henry Johnson. Welcome to today's unveiling ceremony of our nation's highest award for valor. Among the estimated two million soldiers to head to France for World War I, only 122 would receive the nation's highest award for bravery, 
the Medal of Honor. Henry Johnson is among the best of our state and nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Adjutant General for the Military Forces of the State of New York, Major General Patrick A. Murphy. Right, thank you. Thanks to uh, everyone for, for being part of this uh, event today. And, uh, and welcome on behalf of uh, Governor Cuomo and, uh, and the so many folks that uh, worked so hard to, uh, to get this recognition for uh, Sergeant Henry Johnson. Uh, we've got a, uh, a wonderful display, and, and this is a, a simply the, the first of, of many uh, follow-on that, uh, that we had. A great ceremony for those that were at uh, the White House to, for this event. Uh, uh, to, uh, to honor Henry Johnson, as well as, uh, as Sergeant uh, Shemin uh, receiving the Medal of Honor uh, that same day, uh, a long, uh, rec long overdue recognition that was, was well deserved by both of these, uh, these great soldiers. The Medal of Honor is the highest award of valor of action against an enemy force which can be bestowed upon an individual serving in the armed forces of the United States. It is more than fitting that we recall the service of Sergeant Henry Johnson and unveil the Medal of Honor uh, to, the great, to the greater Albany community that, uh, that Johnson called home on this year's lead up to Veterans Day. It is also right that uh, today we present the state's, the New York State's highest military decoration for bravery to recognize Albany's Sergeant Henry Johnson as one of our state's finest heroes. Veterans Day is a call to uh, commemoration and celebration to honor Americans' veterans for their patriotism, love of their country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. We gather here as part of the tribute to veterans to celebrate our own Albany's Henry, Sergeant Henry Johnson for his act of bravery in the face of the enemy and fortitude in the face of discrimination. I'd like to welcome and share the podium with, uh, with Colonel Dave uh, Martinez, commander of today's 369 Infantry, the Harlem Hellfighters, the Sustainment Brigade located uh, at our armory in uh, Harlem to remember exactly what it was, those extraordinary acts of heroism by Sergeant Henry Johnson. Dave? Thank you, everybody. When he took the train, that train from Albany to New York City in the late spring of 1917, Henry Johnson knew all about the regiment he was about to join. The 15th New York Infantry Regiment, the Black Rattlers, was formed in 1913 and was reorganized as the 369th Infantry Regiment just before America's entry into World War I. America's mobilization and call to arms was an opportunity for African Americans to again prove their worth as they had done in every one of the nation's wars. While America's army was still a segregated one at the turn of the 20th century, the regiment served with both white and black officers under its first and visionary commander, Colonel Michael Hayward. The, reg the regiment mobilized for war just weeks after Johnson's enlistment in 1917, training first in New York and then in South Carolina through the summer and fall before heading overseas for service in France. Johnson and his fellow Hellfighters encountered discrimination nearly every step of their journey. It was only on the Western Front, in the trenches of the front lines, alongside French forces and under French command, that the 369th Infantry Regiment was fully integrated as a combat unit. The French were less concerned with race than the Americans and were short on troops. Combat effectiveness mattered more than skin color. And Henry Johnson, in the spring of 1918, went along went a long way in proving that his German enemies, his French allies, his regiment, and our nation. In the early morning hours, then Private Johnson and another soldier were on sentry duty 
as a, at a forward outpost when they received a surprise attack from a German raiding party consisting of at least 12 soldiers. While under intense enemy fire and despite receiving significant wounds, Private Johnson mounted a brave retaliation, resulting in several enemy casualties. When his fellow soldier was badly wounded and being carried away by the enemy, Henry Johnson exposed himself to grave danger by advancing from his position to engage the two enemy captors in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Wielding only a knife and gravely wounded himself, Johnson continued fighting, defeating the two captors and rescuing his wounded comrade. Displaying great courage, he continued to hold back the larger enemy force until the defeated enemy retreated, leaving behind a large cache of weapons and equipment and providing valuable intelligence. Henry Johnson distinguished himself by extraordinary acts of heroism at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as a member of Company C, 369th Infantry Regiment, American Expeditionary Forces on May 15, 1918, during combat operations against the enemy on the front lines of the Western Front in France. For his bravery, Johnson received the Croix de Guerre. On 2 June 2015, President Barack Obama presented Henry Johnson's Medal of Honor posthumously in the name of Congress to the New York Army National Guard Command Sergeant Major Lewis Wilson. Henry was one of the first Americans to receive France's highest award for valor, President Obama said during the ceremony, but his own nation didn't award him anything. Now America can change, and now America can't change what happened to Henry Johnson, the president said. We can't change what happened to many soldiers like him who went uncelebrated because our nation judged them by the color of their skin and not the content of their character, the president said, but we could do our best to make it right. Command Sergeant Major Wilson accepted the award on behalf of Sergeant Major Sergeant Henry Johnson and for his legacy to den today's citizen soldiers of the New York Army National Guard. Our community thanks the many supporters of Henry Johnson who lobbied, researched, and worked tirelessly to bring his heroism to the forefront of American history. After 97 years, that mission is accomplished. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Martinez. The Medal of Honor awarded by the President in the name of Congress will be displayed here at the Capitol for citizens of New York State to reflect and honor Henry Johnson's service and sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, the Adjutant General for the Military Forces for the State of New York, Major General Patrick Murphy, will now present the New York State Medal for Valor to Sergeant Henry Johnson for his actions in 1918. Receiving the award will be Command Sergeant Major Anthony McLean, Senior Enlisted Soldier and Command Sergeant Major of the modern day Harlem Hellfighters, along with Colonel David Martinez, Commander of the 369th Sustainment Brigade. The New York State Medal for Valor is awarded to members of the New York organized militia who have displayed a conspicuous act of valor, heroism, courage, or gallantry. The actions of Sergeant Henry Johnson displayed personal bravery and self-sacrifice that are above and beyond the call of duty. His commitment to duty and efforts to save a fellow soldier at tremendous risk to his own life are conspicuous and distinguish Henry Johnson for gallantry. Major General Murphy will now present the New York State Medal of Valor. Attention to orders. The people of the state of New York have this day conferred the Medal for Valor upon Sergeant William Henry Johnson for conspicuous gallantry, courage, and valor. Sergeant Johnson's utter disregard for his own safety, his extraordinary gallantry, courage, and valor were in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the New York National Guard, and the military forces of the state of New York. Signed this 19th day of May 2015, signed Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor.
Part of our thanks, we'd like to recognize and welcome to the podium, please, Congressman Paul Tonko. Thank you, Richard. Well, certainly, let me thank Governor Andrew Cuomo for this recognition of uh, the powerful presence and force that Sergeant uh, Henry Johnson was in our military, and certainly to our uh, Major General Patrick Murphy and uh, Colonel David Martinez and to all of our military who are assembled. Thank you so much for your leadership. Um, you know, this one goes back several, several years, and the uh, outstanding commitment made by the 369th Harlem Health Fighters um, Veterans Organization Association is so much to be applauded for the work that they did. John Howe and certainly Dr. Maurice Thornton and others who've invested their time and energy into this effort to make certain that the rightful recognition was provided with this uh, you know, Medal of Honor is so important. And to have culminated it all at the White House, to have witnessed the President recognizing the strength, the character, the integrity, the patriotism, the, uh, the bravery of one Henry Johnson uh, was a wonderful moment of history to capture. I think the message in the life of Sergeant Henry Johnson is that uh, he served this nation admirably and that he put himself uh, aside so that others could live. His selflessness is well documented. And the fact that uh, he was able to uh, save many and uh, come back himself wounded speaks to what we celebrate every day of our existence, but in a formal way on Veterans Day. The, uh, the strength of our military that enables us to live free and be that beacon of hope, burn more brightly as that beacon of hope to freedom-loving people around the world. Henry Johnson reminds us that our veterans come from every demographic of our society. And certainly veterans of color have served this nation very well. It's interesting to note that some of this recognition was held uh, back simply because of the uh, injustice in terms of how we should have recognized him. But Henry Johnson, through this exercise, teaches us that we're a nation of integrity, that we acknowledge mistakes and we can fix those mistakes, and that we rightfully pay tribute to uh, his contribution that um, goes beyond what words can express. Also, we're reminded that as our veterans come back wounded, be they physically or mentally wounded, they need our assistance. That commitment that we make oftentimes unwritten, but taken deep into the heart and soul, needs to be expressed on behalf of our veterans. And so, in the, uh, in the spirit of Henry Johnson, we need to commit so our energies and our, our uh, abilities and our, our resources to making certain that our veterans are made whole again. And so here's an individual who has spoken to the diversity of our military one that came from an urban core, 
that our veterans come from far rural stretches, urban cores, metro areas, that they're of various races and creeds, and that men and women have donned the uniform of the military, of the various services, uh, of the various branches, to be able to defend this nation and all for which she stands. So that's the spirit of Henry Johnson, one that will long live as a person who went a long time for rightful recognition, and one who stands as a role model to have served his nation so very well, and one that reminds us that it's about resources that we need to provide as we go forward with our veterans, as they come back and re-enter into society. They need that rightful uh, sense of dignity and uh, resources poured forth in their, their direction. So to all who have made this possible, uh, to my colleagues in, in Washington, to the senators, and certainly to the many representatives. I see Mike McNulty in the, uh, in the audience who had done much work on this uh, entire effort uh, before my time, and uh, to all who supported this effort from the sidelines and in the midst of uh, the halls of government, I say thank you. This is a champion. This is a person who reminds us day in and day out we're a stronger nation because of our veterans. God bless America. God bless our veterans. Long shall we be that wonderful, powerful force on the world scene that speaks to uh, justice and uh, opportunity. Thank you so much. And for, uh, for an effort that took well more than 20 years, it's a terrific opportunity to welcome the mayor of Henry Johnson's hometown city, Mayor Kathy Sheen. Thank you. And I think that it is incredibly fitting that at the first stop of this Medal of Honor in the great state, uh, the great capital of the state of New York, that we are here in the Capitol building where people from across the state come and can learn the story of Henry Johnson. So as proud as we are of this story and what it says about the city of Albany, it is a story that must be told much more largely. And if you look around this room, this war room, and you see these battle scenes and soldiers, both real and mythological, Henry Johnson was a true hero. Henry Johnson can stand shoulder to shoulder with any of the soldiers who are depicted here because of his great bravery uh, on the battlefield. But for those of us in Albany, it's the second chapter of the story that we want to continue to tell that we think is so important, particularly for young people. And that is the courage that it took for Henry Johnson to speak out against a racist system, against a system that discriminated against him, against a system that did not provide him with what it should have provided to every soldier when they returned to our soil. And it is because he spoke out and spoke up that he was then pushed to the side. He was no longer wanted at rallies. He was no longer wanted in those ticker tape parades. And he died alone. And if not for the hard work of many people sitting in this room and many more in this city, he would have been forgotten. But he did not. And so it is with great gratitude that after a long journey that started long before I became mayor, and a story that I hope is told and is taken as part of the pride of this great city long after I am no longer mayor. It is truly an honor to be here today for this first stop, but I hope is a first stop in the great capital city of this medal, to thank all of those who made it possible, and to commit to you that we will continue to tell this story, that we want to ensure that this medal is not only here, but in our city hall, and that all of those who made this possible can come, can see, can share the story, and can commit to one another to pass it on, to always pass it on. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our uh, ceremony for today.
Thank you for joining us, and uh, please take the time to visit and view Henry Johnson's Medal of Honor on display here in the War Room, along with the other historical artifacts from New York's military history. Thank you all for attending.